Maria Leonor. Lenny. Girona Robredo, born Maria Leonor Santo Tomas Girona, April 23, 1965, is a Filipina lawyer and social activist who is the 14th and current Vice President of the Philippines. Running under the Liberal Party, Robredo won the vice presidency contest in the May 9, 2016 election, as confirmed and proclaimed by the official congressional count of May 25-27, with 14,418,817 votes, 35.11% of the votes, narrowly defeating Senator Bongbong Marcos by 263,473 votes amid controversy. She is the second woman to serve as vice president after Gloria Macapagal Arroyo and the first vice president from Bicol. Robredo first came to public attention in 2012 after the death of her husband, Interior Secretary Jesse Robredo, in the 2012 Philippine Piper Seneca crash off the coast of Masbate Island. Prior to the accident, her involvement in public life was as a lawyer and social activist. After this, she ran in the 2013 general election and won as the representative of Camarines Sur's 3rd District to the Philippine House of Representatives for the 16th Congress, a post she held until her inauguration as Vice President on June 30, 2016. Early life and education Maria Leonor Santo Tomas Girona was born on April 23, 1965 in Naga, Camarines Sur, Philippines. She was the first of three children born to retired Naga City Regional Trial Court Judge Antonio Girona and Salvacion Santo Tomas. Girona Robredo attended the Basic Education Department of Universidad de Sta. Isabel in Naga, graduating from elementary school in 1978, and from high school in 1982. She then graduated with a degree in economics from the UP School of Economics, at the University of the Philippines Diliman, in 1986. She then went to obtain her master's degree in business administration at San Beda College prior to studying law at University of Nueva Caceres, graduating in 1992. Early career Inspired by the People Power Revolution after graduating from UP Diliman, Girona chose to temporarily forego law studies and instead decided to work as a researcher for the Bicol River Basin Development Program BRBDP, a government agency tasked with integrated area development planning in the three provinces of the Bicol region. Here she met then program director Jesse Robredo, who would eventually become her husband. She passed the bar on her second attempt in 1996. Robredo served in the public attorney office, a role in which she often took up the defense for cases pursued by her husband, who by then had become mayor of Naga. From 1998 to 2008, Robredo became the coordinator of Centro ng Alternativong Lingap Panligan, Saligan, a Naga-based alternative legal support group. Saligan's work aimed to encourage young legal professionals to take on leadership roles, and involved visiting distant rural communities to provide legal services to residents who would otherwise have little or no access to such services, as well as conducting legal advocacy by proposing amendments and new laws based on the needs of these marginalized communities. Later, the group's focus shifted to include helping rural women to acquire capital in order to become competitive markets. In addition, she founded the Lakas ng Kababayhan ng Naga Federation, an organization that provides training and livelihood opportunities for women. In 1989, in 2012, Robredo was named the chairperson of the Liberal Party in Camarines Sur. Congressional career she ran in Camarines Sur's 3rd Congressional District during the Philippine general elections of 2013. On May 16, 2013 she was proclaimed winner, beating Nelly Favis Villafuerte of Nationalist People's Coalition, United Nationalist Alliance, wife of former Congressman Luis Villafuerte and member of the politically powerful Villafuerte dynasty. During her term in Congress, Robredo was the Vice Chairman of the House Committees on Good Governance, Public Accountability, and Revision of Laws, and a member of 11 other House panels. She was known for being a strong advocate of the Freedom of Information Act, was a strong supporter of the Bangsamoro Basic Law, participatory governance and transparency were major thrusts of Robredo's legislative agenda. 
The first law Robredo authored in Congress was the Full Disclosure Policy Bill, HB 19, which would have mandated all government agencies and their sub-units and projects to disclose their budget and financial transactions in a conspicuous manner. Without any requests from the public. Concerned that the marginalized sector should not be denied access to government frontline services and public meetings based on their attire, she sponsored the Open Door Policy Act, House Bill No. 6286, which prohibits government offices and agencies from implementing strict dress codes. Robredo also authored the People Empowerment Bill, HB 4911, which sought to allow more participation from Filipinos in decision and policy making, and the Participatory Budget Process Bill, HB B3905, which sought to increase participation in budget-related decisions in government projects by locals. She also wrote the Comprehensive Anti-Discrimination Bill, HB 3432, to prohibit discrimination on the basis of ethnicity, race, religion or belief, sex, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity and expressions, language, disability, HIV status, etc. to promote transparency in the taxation process. She sponsored the House version, House Bill 05831, of what would eventually become Republic Act RA 10708, the Tax Incentive Management and Transparency Act of 2009 TIMTA, concerned about corruption in agrarian reform, Robredo co-authored House Bill 5841, which would have created an agrarian reform commission that will focus on investigating violations against the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program CARP. Other major legislation co-authored by Robredo include the Anti-Dynasty Bill and the Healthy Beverage Options Act, House Bill 4021. Legislative portfolio As a member of the 16th Congress, Robredo was one of the principal authors of the House version of the Tax Incentives Management and Transparency Act TIMTA, Republic Act RA 10708, House Bill 05831, which was enacted on December 9, 2015. She also co-authored the House version of the following laws, the National Children's Month Act, Republic Act RA 10661, HB 01641, enacted on May 29, 2015, declaring the celebration of the National Children's Month on November of every year, the Charter of the Quezon City Development Authority, Republic Act RA 10646, HB 03899, lapsed into law on November 8, 2014, the Open High School System Act, Republic Act Act RA 10665, HB 04085, enacted on July 9, 2015, establishing and appropriating funds for the open high school system, Republic Act RA 10638, HB 04089, extending the corporate life of the Philippine National Railways for another 50 years, enacted on June 16, 2014, Republic Act RA 10707, HB 04147, amending the probation law of 1976. Enacted on November 26, 2015, rationalizing and strengthening the probation system, the Graphic Health Warnings Law, Republic Act RA 10643, HB 04590, enacted on November 15, 2014, prescribing the printing of graphic health warnings on tobacco products, Republic Act RA 10655, HB 05280, decriminalizing premature remarriages, enacted on March 13, 2015, and the Songuniang Cabinet. Baton Reform Act, of 2015, Republic Act RA 10742, HB 06043, enacted on January 15, 2016. In addition, Robredo was one of many co authors of the national budgets for the years 2014, RA 10633, HB 02630, enacted on December 20, 2013, 2015, RA 10651, HB 04968, enacted on December 23, 2014. 14, and 2016, RA 10717, HB 06132, enacted on December 22, 2015. Robredo was also a key supporter of HB 4911, People Empowerment Bill to create a partnership between local governments and civil society through the establishment of a People's Council in every local government unit. 
This act also prescribes the powers and functions of the said council, HB 3432, comprehensive anti-discrimination to prohibit discrimination on the basis of ethnicity, race, religion or belief, sex, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity and expressions, language, disability, HIV status, and other status, and will provide penalties for it, HB 4021, healthy beverage options to regulate the availability of beverages to children in schools and for other purposes, HB 19, full disclosure policy to require the full disclosure of all information on fiscal management from all national government departments, bureaus, agencies and other instrumentalities, including government-owned or controlled corporation, and their subsidiaries and local governments. This act will also provide penalties for violations of the said requirement. HB 3905, participatory budget process to institutionalize citizens' participation in the budget process and for other processes, and HB 3237, freedom of information to strengthen the right of citizens to information held by the government. Vice Presidency on October 5, 2015, after her three daughters set aside their initial objections, Robredo announced that she would run for the post of Vice President of the Philippines under the Liberal Party in the 2016 election, as the running mate of presidential candidate Mar Roxas. Robredo won the election with 14,418,817 votes or 35.11% of the votes, narrowly defeating closest rival Senator Bongbong Marcos by 263,473 votes or by 0.64%. Robredo was sworn in as Vice President of the Philippines on June 30, 2016 at the Quezon City Reception House, of which Robredo uses as her office. Robredo first met President Rodrigo Duterte personally at the Armed Forces of the Philippines Change of Command Ceremonies at Camp Aguinaldo on July 1, 2016, a day after their inauguration. She later paid a courtesy call on him at the Malacanang Palace on July 4, their first formal meeting. On July 7, Duterte called Robredo during a press conference to offer her the cabinet position of being the head of the Housing and Urban Development Coordinating Council, which Robredo accepted. Robredo is the third vice president to head the government agency focused on housing programs, following her immediate predecessors Noli de Castro and Jejomar Binay. Duterte earlier said that he did not want to appoint a cabinet position to Robredo due to his unfamiliarity with her and his friendship with Bongbong Marcos. In September 2016, after the onslaught of Typhoon Ferdi in Batanes, Robredo visited the island in which she offered aid and brought emergency shelter assistance to the people. In the same month Lenny Robredo met with Catholic bishops. Conference of the Philippines, CBCP President Lingayan Dagupan Archbishop Socrates B. Villegas to discuss drug rehabilitation programs. In October 2016, international aid agencies have thrown their full support behind the anti poverty program of Vice President Lenny Robredo, joining a summit scheduled on the same month where they will partner with the country's poorest local government units. The summit known as Partnerships Against Poverty Summit will be held on October 10 as a product of her twice-weekly visits to the poorest of the poor local government units LGUs in her first 100 days as Vice President. Some of the participants such as UN Children's Fund, World Food Programme, the UN Development Programme, the EU, the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank will help in research, knowledge sharing, technical assistance, small grants for capacity building and the like, said Georgina Hernandez, head of the OVP's anti-poverty and advocacies programs. Following the onslaught of Super Typhoon Lawn, Robredo visited Cagayan and met with Cagayan Governor Manuel Mamba and local disaster officials to inquire about the damage, which will be the basis for the kind of assistance her office will provide. The Anti-Poverty Program, also known Angat Buhay Program has benefited 83,707 families across the country in its first year of implementation. On December 4, 2016, Robredo was informed by Cabinet Secretary Leoncio Avasco, Jr. To desist from attending all cabinet meetings starting December 5, which prompted her to release a statement tendering her resignation as the chairwoman of the Housing and Urban Development Coordinating Council, effective the following day. 
Duterte supporters had tried to impeach her as vice president, for criticizing his bloody anti drug crackdown and other policies. During the Marawi crisis, Robredo called for unity as government troops engaged in a firefight against the Mount Group in Marawi and started organizing donations and directing relief operations for the victims. She would then visit wounded soldiers in Iligan to give support and contributions. Robredo respects President Duterte. S. Implementation of martial law in the whole of Mindanao as a way to combat terrorism, but requested for measures to ensure that the implementation would not reminisce the abuses and violations during Ferdinand Marcos. Implementation of Proclamation No. 1081. She also questioned the coverage and prolongation of the implementation and called on members of the Congress to review and validate the implementation as a constitutional duty. President Rodrigo Duterte skipped participation in what would have been his first Independence Day rights due to exhaustion. Vice President Robredo, as the second highest ranking official of the country, led the flag raising and wreath laying ceremonies during the 119th anniversary of the Philippine independence. Foreign Affairs Secretary Alan Peter Cayetano stood beside her as Duterte's representative. In October 2017, the Senate increased the 2018 budget of the Office of the Vice President OVP, by P20 million which is allotted for the Vice President's Angat Buhay program. In the same month, Robredo called on fellow Filipinos to remember the 165 soldiers and police who gave their lives for the liberation of Marawi City. Robredo said her office was already preparing to help in the rehabilitation of Marawi City, primarily through its flagship anti-poverty program. Personal life Lenny is known for her simple and down-to-earth lifestyle. Lenny was married to Jesse Robredo, whom she met while working at the Bicol River Basin Development Program, from 1987 until his death from a plane crash in 2012. The couple had three daughters, Jessica Marie, Janine Patricia, and Jillian Therese. Their eldest daughter, Jessica, was an executive assistant at the Office of Civil Defense, while their second eldest, Patricia, was a UAAP basketball sideline reporter for National University. Since May 14, 2017, Robredo hosts her own public service radio program entitled Baservice Young Lenny, aired on DZXL. Honors and recognition Robredo was featured in an episode of ABS CBN. S. Drama Anthology Malala Mo Kaya on February 6, 2016, three days before the official campaign period for national candidates in the 2016 elections. Dimples Romana starred the role of Robredo, but Kay Abad was portrayed in 2013. On August 1, 2016, Robredo was awarded as the Honorary Outstanding Woman Award of the Year 2016 by the Thailand government, coinciding with the Thailand. S. Women's Day. The recognition was given to Robredo, citing her works and advocacies for women's empowerment and pushing for gender equality. On August 23, 2016, Robredo was awarded as the most influential Filipina woman of the world by Filipina Women's Network, FWN, a non government organization. Two universities have conferred Robredo with honorary doctorates, the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, 2015, Doctor in Public Administration, and the University of St. Anthony in Ariga, Camarines Sur, her home province, 2017, Doctor of Humanities. References External links Official website Profile at the House of Representatives of the Philippines Profile at Bayang Matuwid